able to understand various uh, uh, vehicle models, uh, whether it is a, a very complex model or a simplified model, uh, which are quite sufficient uh, to look at some important vibration motion like bounce, pitch, and roll of sprung mass, uh, and unsprung mass, uh, in order to design the suspension, right? So we are going to see these models, uh, some uh, particularly quarter car model and pitch and bounce model, and. <coughs> Uh, uh, in the uh, next class. But today we will uh, just to summarize the whole uh, picture view uh, of this uh, ride dynamics. That was my objective uh, of this lecture. So what I mean by that is uh, we have just understood so far uh, what is human response to vibration and what are the various uh, vehicle models that you could see uh, uh, available in the uh, literature as well in the standard textbooks. Now we'll go ahead with looking at an important uh, uh, source of this vibration called uh, surface irregularities uh, or road roughness. So this is very important data. See, I, I, I have seen that uh, most of you are, uh, uh, there are many uh, student batches are working on this ride, uh, quarter car model, half car model, full car model and so on. And uh, I have seen uh, that to your model, you are trying to solve uh, the governing equation in uh, the MATLAB using Simulink. And uh, you see that you are giving that input to the vehicle as um, uh, an impulse excitation, a pulse excitation, or series of pulse excitation, or you give some step input, uh, or some harmonic excitation, and so on. That's all uh, the standard functions uh, uh, quantitatively uh, to get the responses of the uh, vehicle model. You can also have a replication of, and primarily it is important, the uh, actual road to be given as an input when it comes. How do you uh, define an actual road input? So that's what is very important uh, uh, thing. The actual road is now uh, defined by the road roughness. The road roughness is uh, normally represented as power spectral density function. So you know what is power spectral density function? It is the power content, energy content of a signal per frequency is what is power spectral density function. So here, if you look at the frequencies are two, there are two frequencies that you need to understand. What are those? One is <coughs> spatial frequency. So you look at here the unit, wave number written unit, cycle per feet, or it can be cycle per meter in SI units, right? So this is what is called wave number or spatial frequency. What do you mean by temporal frequency? Temporal frequency is instead of uh, uh, a cycle per feet, you will have cycle per second. It is in hertz. So that is what is called a temporal frequency. So this diagram represents a power spectral density of road elevation profile of two road kinds. One is bituminous road, asphalt road. Another one is Portland cement concrete road. So you can see their uh, curve fit, there is a crossover of both of them. So there is a particular uh, wave number or the spatial frequency. You see they're uh, crossing each other, right? At a higher wave number, you have a smooth road amplitude or the spectral energy is slower than that of a concrete road. So if you ride your vehicle on a concrete road, that's more harsher than uh, uh, asphalt road in high frequencies wave number, higher wave numbers, right? So when I say wave number, you should immediately connect that to the frequency. How do you connect that to the frequency? If I multiply the wave number by the speed, velocity of the vehicle, what will I get? See, look at this unit cycle per uh, feet. Uh, speed of the vehicle will be um, feet per second. So that becomes cycle per second hertz. So when I say higher the wave number, a spatial frequency, uh, you connect that to a higher frequency excitation. Right? Yeah. So uh, another thing here in this graph, what is that you have to understand is so if you go to a lower order, left hand side wave number, uh, this is say, say 0 0.001 here, a 0 0.005 wave number. What do you mean by uh, this? Wave number is defined as reciprocal of wavelength. What is wavelength? A wavelength can be representing your length of the road between uh, corresponding peaks, right? So the wave number is reciprocal of wavelength. 
to the higher the wavelength that means if i look at the respective peaks repetition uh, um, from uh, the road of longer length and that will have your lower wavelength wave number if we look at the smaller uh, road length uh, in a track that is below the uh, wheels and that will have higher wave number <coughs> right so if we have uh, the uh, longer wavelength uh, and you get your wave number multiply this with the velocity you will have uh, the frequency smaller frequencies smaller frequencies are subjected to the profile of the road uh, higher frequencies are subjected to the texture of the road however the roughness is defined by uh, this parameter so you can see here this equation gives you uh, the road uh, power spectral density function right yeah if you look at here again uh, see this uh, uh, you can see that it is evident that uh, if we have uh, if we have uh, uh, your road roughness uh, representation uh, uh, in a temporal frequencies look at here this all axis uh, they are in hertz so the first one what is the elevation uh, what was there in the previous slide here can be now represented in this by multiplying that by a vehicle speed so your power spectral density function is sin squared per hertz now a function of frequency is like this but if you look at most of the time in these models uh, uh, you see that road excitation uh, in terms of acceleration to the vehicle model you consider why is it so because it is uh, clearly bringing in the effect of uh, high speed or speed of the vehicle look at uh, its derivative here is uh, power spectral density of speed and here it is power spectral density of acceleration in acceleration if you look at it is quite constant at this lower frequencies till here around the 2 hertz after that you see it is rapidly increases this acceleration why is it because of the vehicle speed how could you understand that if you represent your road as a harmonic uh, function like this an amplitude times sin of uh, 2 pi nu is wave number times x right so here, uh, what is this x is uh, vehicle speed times the time uh, of the uh, observation, time of travel. So speed times the time of travel is what is this uh, displacement. So if I put that here, <coughs> so your equation becomes this. So this is uh, the equation corresponding to this first picture. <coughs> then if you differentiate that twice, you will have this velocity term brought in here. So it is a function of velocity square now. So what is happening? Your uh, your uh, this function, which is uh, now more uh, uh, explicitly shows that uh, the influence of vehicle speed. So you have your power spectral density function of um, the road excitation in terms of acceleration as function of frequency is a very common uh, way of representing as an input to the vehicle model to study or to simulate. Uh, actually your uh, vibration model of the vehicle so this is a very important uh, understanding uh, in order to uh, have a real time uh, vibration phenomena in your analytical models uh, to represent the road roughness so is there any doubt in this regard any one of you we have any doubts I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, I understand that you. Oh. Oh. So, can you just explain, like, uh, what is that PSD, power spectral density? Little bit confused about that. Power spectral density function is, say, for example, uh, how this road uh, data is obtained is you are taking uh, the length of the road, right? Say, for example, you take some 61 meter road, length of the road, that is the length below the track of your vehicle. If you take in that you have an undulation uh, elevation of the road profile present, right? So you are going to take yeah. a smaller mm till uh, of uh, 61 meter uh, 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 length of the road. How this are varying that you have to measure. So how that is normally measured is using high speed profilometers. So it is going to measure simply uh, the elevation that is height of the peaks on the road surface from its mean. 
for uh, different lengths. So you will have this all. So the measurement uh, is going to compose what? Number of wavelengths. So one wavelength of 61 meter, when I say I can have a wavelength uh, category, uh, sum of number of wavelengths from MM till that long road patch. So when I do a Fourier transform of this measured data from profilometer, I'm able to decompose the data. Right? I'm able to decompose that uh, road data into number of uh, 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 spatial frequency uh, components and that number of spatial frequency components are represented here. For example, point uh, spatial frequency if I take, I will have my peaks amplitudes are this. So that is the energy content of this. If I march ahead with the every uh, uh, spatial frequency, I will have this. So this is how this uh, is fixed. So here an interesting observation is, as the spatial frequency increases, what is happening? Uh, spectral uh, function or spectral density function that the energy content is reduced. That's clear. Why it keeps reducing? What is the meaning of higher wave number, higher spatial frequency that corresponds to low wavelength of the road in mm? So I look at the peaks when I apply the Fourier transform. I look at the variation of the peaks with the lower wavelengths. So when I see the lower wavelengths. And that is going to excite a higher frequency. So this wave number multiplied by vehicle speed is uh, going to be uh, exciting the vehicle. And also it's clear, see the bituminous is what? It is a road uh, uh, which is made of uh, uh, asphalt. So that is a smooth road. So as a smooth road, if you look at the uh, energy content uh, and the higher frequencies are going to be very less. So we have looked at two things. One is uh, texture, another one is uh, roughness. Uh, so high uh, rough road and low rough road and uh, high smooth road and uh, uh, low smooth road like that, right? So this is what is on a smooth road, you will have your uh, energy excitation is very low. But this energy excitation, if you look at only with the displacement, that may not be that appealing. Instead, if you take your acceleration, where it's, uh, you see that is more clear, till this one hertz, uh, or 3 hertz, uh, you have a constant uh, power spectral density. After that, it rapidly uh, increases. So, this is what is uh, the representation of the road. Is it clear now? Yeah. Yes. I hope I have answered your question. Uh, who has asked the question? Yes, sir. Who has asked the question? Kaustup, sir. Kaustup. So, is it clear, Kaustup? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we will see that all in detail. See, uh, the main objective of uh, my class uh, of uh, this slides are to say and conclude a uh, right dynamic system can be understood clearly. We can uh, go, uh, understand this domain of vehicle dynamics. If you are understanding of uh, uh, this right excitation sources or the mechanics of um, vehicle vibration responses from the vehicle models are to understand what are the boundaries or human response to the vibration. So these are the three important uh, uh, areas that one has to be uh, uh, inculcating the knowledge when you are saying that you are uh, an engineer in right dynamics. So this is what is excitation, your vehicle model uh, and you get your vibration and the right perception. So this is that uh, classical picture uh, taken from Gillespie uh, to comprehend this whole lecture.